we're speaking on freedom from fear, you know, the one thing that we need to do in prayer or in study is take mastery over our ignorance, our superstition, our fear, and that's true. I never will forget, you know, when studying with Carl Jung, and he said, well, now, what are your fears? And I couldn't think of any at the moment. Within a few minutes, he had quite a list. And he said, there your task begins. That's why you're here. Sometimes we're unaware that we're afraid of many things. It says one of the greatest common fears known to man is the fear of death. And not one of us is going to die. It's a part of life. One of the other great fears is the thought of growing old. Man feels he's going to lose his virility. A woman and change of life. He has all types of thoughts become weird. Jordan. Then the fear of insecurity and the fear of being alone. Well, here we believe that there is a power that loves us, cares for us, that we can turn to. And we believe that we're never going to walk alone. We believe in immortality and we believe that it's stepping just here to there. And so it's a part of life. Part of it's just as real as we are sitting here now. And when you have this realization in your own heart, my, what a load it is off a person's mind. Well, remember there is no philosophy I have ever read of, and I doubt if you have, that will help man to succeed when he constantly doubts his own ability to be successful. Or we can be very successful with a talent in one area. And we can be so unsuccessful in others. We try ourselves to sleep. No matter how hard you pray and work for success in your life, and I mean the well-balanced life, if your thought tonight is saturated with doubt and fear, then your ambitions are impossible. Now, this is the way I feel about it. They're impossible unless you change your mind and then are willing to keep it changed. As we look at our world today, certainly fear is a universal nemesis. It, it's here. We feel it. One cannot read a, the newspaper. Without the recognition that fear is touching people. And you know the unfortunate thing about it is many people endeavor to cover up their fears by making believe everything is all right. We don't do this in religious science. We face the issue. We face what that fear, what that doubt is. That is our task. That is our task of every one of our students, practitioners, and ministers. We all have weaknesses. But what are we doing about them? Are we repressing them? We cannot hide our emotions. They're going to come out somewhere. Now, even though we consider conditions to be frightening in many areas today, because here's reality. People are being killed today. We must remember that throughout history there have always been frightening times. Always. And yet, throughout our Bible and other Bibles, of all these lands, they all are admonished to fear not. I know Jesus spoke very affirmatively. He didn't speak negatively. He didn't frighten people, as many do today from the pulpit. But I've always loved that passage. For he said, fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Now that kingdom to me means balance. It means happiness. It means freedom. It means liberty. It means justice. But it means a balance of integration within our own selves, of our play life, our work life, our creative life, our love life. I think first, before I say too much on fear, we should consider the true meaning of fear. Recognizing this truth, and you must understand this, that we have all been born with an elemental alarm system that tells us when something's wrong. Now, sometimes men will blind themselves to it. And the man, perhaps he is successful in one area, but he'll reach out for a drink, and he'll take the drink, and he'll take another. Why? Because he feels this alarm system. Perhaps his feelings are hurt. Somebody said something. This is his alarm system. He should have felt the reaction to it. But he should have asked, why did I react this way? Instead of reaching for that drink, suppressing it, getting unconscious. There is a normal protective 
mechanism built into each and every one of us for our own good, and you know it. See, when I speak of a normal protective system within you, sometimes we're frozen with a moment of difficulty. And that's that moment that we're interested in. What do you do? You blow up, you curse, you drink, you become quiet. What is this that's speaking to me? What is this that's telling me? Why, even your body has this. You start to fall, you'll put your arm out. Your arm will just go out automatically. Sure, this is your protective alarm system there. Everything has been built into us to help us live a happy life, but we can't see it. We won't believe it. There's something that tells me not to drive my car when the tires are worn out. There's something that tells me if I smell smoke in the house, quickly, go look for the difficulty. If a member of our family is involved in wrong transactions that are breaking the law, certainly we're concerned, but what are we going to do about it? Something tells us. That is why we've been blessed with a reasoning mind. A reasoning mind that is first analytical, secondly it's perceptive, and third it's capable of doing something about every concern. Now isn't this something? Now this has been a knowledge that man has known. An analytical mind that is perceptive. And a mind that is capable of acting. If the mind has an action, there's a reaction. Now, you know yourself. You get mad at somebody, you're going to have a reaction, not only to your own self. Your stomach comes up, but others, too. Here's the reaction that goes out. Just like you throw a pebble across a pond, and here are the ripples. Goes around the world, I guess. But it is only when we fail to recognize we have the power within us to do something about anything. That we turn fear into a concern of action. Now, I've known people that are worried, 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 and it never happened. And I've known people, too, with great concerns, but there's no activity, and they remain concerned. They become sick. There's something that can be done. Fear becomes a month overcoming. Fear is that place where we give up or run away. And so many of us, we say we're not running away, but we're making believe, aren't we? You know, fear is the name given to the various forms of running away from a conflict when we appear powerless to cope with it. Why aren't we honest and truthful? I will have somebody come into my office and they will say, Dr. Hornaday, I have a friend that is in great difficulty. And this person, I want to help them because this person is just drinking too much. And this person is in a lot of other difficulty, financially and otherwise. And I know sitting there that the person, this is the person. This is the person. And when I've had enough of it, I say, look, nice to meet you. Now let's get down to business. Now, I try to check the concern out because a talk out is good at times. Get it out of the system. But it's only when we really face up to things. You know, many people will run away from even a thought. They will give up. There'll be a man and he will seek this method and that method. Trying to remain young, we will say. When he's always young, if he'd believe it, he's going to grow older this way. Believe me. We've seen women do the same thing. And we have observed in so many instances the person who can be absolutely successful, we will say, in having friends, the life of the party and all. But that person who hides the greatest the greatest talent they have, and that is the talent of harmony and honesty, and a person that faces up. For instance, I, when I was endeavoring to assist a family of seven children in finding the father, it seemed quite tragic, because I found the father by letter, and he wrote the letter and he said, I'm leaving as soon as this is posted so you can't trace me. 
He said, it was just impossible. He said, the responsibility was too great to take care of my wife and the seven children. And as long as I was in the home, I, we were having difficulty with the welfare. Knowing this, he disappeared. And here were seven just beautiful, beautiful children and a beautiful wife. Well, we will run away from responsibility. We will drink when we shouldn't. We will hate when we shouldn't. We will create many conditions that we shouldn't, just to hide. Because the responsibility is too great. Now, we have the responsibility for our remaining young and virile, as I believe that we control the destiny of the body. And I do not go along that women have to do this and men have to do this. I don't believe there's a time when you say that you're through. I think there's that time of beginning again, because why? Every single cell, except the nerve cells in your body, is renewed practically every 11 months. Three sets of lungs, basically a year. Think of it. The heart muscle is renewed, of course. The intestinal tract is renewed. We say, what? Well, why do we then go down, down? Why? Well, we're finding out more and more about the psychosomatic factors here. If you put the stamp of approval upon yourself as finished, you're finished. If you put the stamp of approval, which your youth is gone, it's gone. You are the one proclaiming it. Now, I think many people will say, well, you're carrying this a little too far. Am I? You're saying that. And if you're one saying that you can't be young and that you can't be bright and you can't have strength and beauty of soul and body and mind, you're the one that's saying it. Because we have observed too many evidences to the contrary, but we've only observed these when we do become balanced in all things. See, I feel this. When we speak of the escape reaction and we seek for something else to take the place of it, there isn't anything to take the place but to get something out of our system. If you read Life Everlasting, that's that little book. And I told the story about the man who came in, and he asked me to pray for just so long because he had this to complete. He would furnish the money for his family. Now, here this man fighting, 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 struggling. And the doctor said, look, if you don't quit, you only have so long. And it wasn't long enough to complete this deal. And he said, look, through prayer, do you think that we can do it so I'll last that many months? I said, what in the world are you trying to do? I said, you're... By going at this rate, you're going to kill yourself. I said, you have a fear here, and that's your problem. Now, it wasn't a fear of dying. It was a fear that about the family, then underneath it was a fear. And you know, when he had a real thought, function, about immortality, this man not only completed that enterprise, but many others. Because this is a real fear. Some men think about it when they drink. Our scriptures advise us that when we have such fears, it is good that we enter a place of quietness where we can catch our breath and reason, where balance is in evidence. Have you done it? See, regardless of the situation, when we take a calm, reasonable look at the evidence which precipitated the fear, analyze all the factors of it, pray about it, and then accept something that cares and something that will guide us. Then and then only can we deal effectively with the situation. Now, this is the action of mind. The action of mind. Perhaps you haven't heard of the psychiatrist von Mader of Zurich, Switzerland. It was my privilege to be with him and to study with him. But he was a psychiatrist who found such difficulty in treating patients. They were coming for so long, some for two or three years. And the cost was very great. And on this one occasion, one of the patients said, that admired him very much, said, would you pray with, with me? He'd never prayed with anyone. This was mine. This was analysis. You know, he said a prayer. And it just seemingly came to him. I guess he said, God, help me. It was a short prayer. But he found such a change in this one. That for years, and he was criticized. Criticized, they wanted him even out of a society there because he prayed with people. 
And that wasn't science, they said. But he found the result. And the results last. And now he's being greatly accepted. It isn't science. Science is based upon a principle that functions and will function for anyone. Love is a science to me because I know what love will do and you know it too if we use it. I mean pure, unadulterated love. No selfishness, no greed. Just a real love. And I also know what Truth can do, honesty. I know what could do. Because when we're truthful and honest, the communication becomes very real. It is then you put your arms around somebody and a reality comes to it. It's when you can take somebody's hand truthfully, without any make-believe or pretense. What a wonderful thing happens. It is then that our aggression ceases. Because we're truthful first with ourselves, then with others. Well, I know many people are saying, it might be true the concern was planned by our Creator to be a protective action. I know this, it was planned to be a temporary action. Temporary. And it should always pave the way for a sensible, God-directed solution. And when I say God, I'm speaking about an intelligence right where you are now. Something that you can know and believe. I know people are going to say, well, if God is so wonderful all-knowing, if there's an intelligence out here, why did he permit us to be such fearful beings? To destroy ourselves through stress and worry, have ulcers, heart attacks, strokes, feelings of guilt. Well, our Creator didn't. We were given this alarm system so we'd stand still. We were given an alarm system so that we would know something is wrong and do something about it the same. If you smelled gas in your house, you'd go turn it off. If it was on, but we won't do it. We let the gas come until suddenly there's the explosion in the body, in the mind, in the affairs, in the career. I really believe that fear and worry and concern and anxiety are wonderful things, providing they occupy a small portion of our life. Now, a great many people will say, but you don't know the problems I have. You don't know the problem about my daughter, my son, don't I? Don't I? When we have certain problems, and problems of the mind and the heart, soul, we're either going to let that fear just absorb us, possess us, or we're going to say there is something that will help us and let go of that because we can't afford it. But in the letting go, are we really letting go? The only way you can know is by your behavior change. People would ask Ernest, well, how do you know when a prayer is prayed and it's over? Why, by the way you act, the way you feel, by your behavior. That's how you know. If you're worried constantly about something and suddenly you change, your whole family will know it and everyone will know it, and something happens within the family. If you're worried about your work, don't worry about it. Give the best you can and watch what happens. But remember this. If your tires are worn out on that car, don't come here to pray that God's going to put tread on them, because he's not. You pray for something. To use you. You need the money, all right. We're going to work. We're going to enjoy it. And we'll get the tires on that car. You see, worry becomes such a habit. As I've said so many times, people, some of them I know are specialists in it. You want to know anything about worry, I'll send you to some. They're not members of this church, but uh, they'd be willing to see you. <laughs> I had to put that in quick. If some of you were looking around. We can become habitual failures. Really, we can, because that's all we think about. I've known people, and I'm sure you have too, who were capable. And they'd go from one thing to the other. And I know that you've known people that were so capable that you just were startled at their capability. But yet also startled at the hell they were causing for themselves, but especially for others. And it's interesting to note in these instances, you know, more people are let out of jobs, positions, 
because of personality conflict than weak capability? Now, I think that's a very interesting thing. People won't look at themselves. They won't be honest with themselves. I know it's difficult to tell somebody who is negative or arrogant, always complaining that something is wrong with that person because they won't believe it. Yet when we are able to, we have healing. In most cases. Their arrogance, their negative attitudes, always represent a, a deep-seated fear. The fear is there. Ernest said we're all part of just one fear that looks out through many windows. But the fear is there, and we really don't believe God is present. We don't believe that there's a healing action that we can use. Not long ago, a physician was procured for a man. Well, he was talented. Pay was good. And it even included a profit-sharing program, and it was wonderful. And so after the first week, he came out and said, how are you getting along? He said, well, work was all right. He said, you know, I don't think they like me. Now, he'd been there a week. I said, what do you mean they don't like you? They gave you the job. He said, yes, but he said, there's a feeling there. He said, I'm very sensitive. I can tell when people don't like me. And here he goes off on this. Now, I knew this man needed counseling, and I said, look, I want to talk to you. He said, well, I can't do that. And I said, but I think you just need to have a little knowledge about yourself here. He said, why? I said, just because of the remarks you've made. And I said, this is a wonderful position for you. Well, do you know that it went on for three or four weeks. He didn't come to see me. He could have. It had been important, but he didn't think it was, and he was fired. Now, in this instance, the man refused to improve his own means for overcoming the problem. His own power within. He refused to use it. We could have used it, shaken hands, and said how wonderful, but he wouldn't face it. The habit of fear was so strong it could almost be likened to a drug addict. Now believe me. The habit of fear and the habit of worry can be almost likened to a drug addict. It tortures the soul, the mind. We say, well, what is that fear underneath there? We have to find it. And if we're honest, we'll admit it. Life demands that we take steps regarding any negative condition in our life, one by one. And if you have a negative condition, take a step to know. For instance, if you heard a madman was loose in the community where you live, right around your house, wouldn't you take means to protect yourself and your family? Surely you'd lock the door. You'd surely do that. However, some people would say, well, why lock it? He'll get me anyway. This is just how far you can go down. Open the door, let him in. This is just the way life is. The principle is not simply to seek to overcome a fear. It's to master the problem. It's a challenge. Now, if we have weaknesses, let's master it. I don't care if you're ill. I don't care if something else. Let's master the problem of the thought behind it. Because that thought is an action in consciousness where all the action of life is. That's what we are conscious of. And that's what we can be conscious of. I think we must discover what it is that causes the fear. And sometimes it's very, very sad. A young girl was just, she had to leave her job. A beautiful girl. Beautiful. And this girl was 29. She was collapsing, and I mean really collapsing, because she couldn't stand the thought of being certain. Now, you might say, oh, isn't, isn't that ridiculous? To her, this is vague. And when I talked, I said, well, look, uh, I'm very, very happy at my youthful age. The way you look at it. She couldn't see it. It was very sad. She would not let loose. And so she went through a complete breakdown of this. Thing. And she's coming along now. We prayed for her. But our prayer is only awakened. She still has to do something. We can pray for you here tonight that you've got to do something too. And be joyful in the doing. 
You know, the communication factor that I spoke of last Wednesday night is so important. The communication with yourself. Ask yourself what your weakness is. When Carl Jung had me write them down, well, I, I just couldn't believe it. I just couldn't believe it. There were little things. But take a lot of little little things coming up here. Take your taxes, take your car, take this, take war, take this, take the way you look. Uh, take all this, put it all together, and you've got quite a thing here. You're holding it up for everyone to see, too. You might not think so. It's got to be thrown away. Let's live for today. Make this a treasure day tomorrow. Good morning, God. Let's have a good time. This has got to become a habit. And when it becomes a habit, something happens to you physically and mentally and spiritually. We must communicate with each other. And we can communicate. What a joy it is to do it honestly. You know, there, there was one who believed that stress, strain, worry be eradicated. And of course, it was Jesus. He was very definite. He spoke to his disciples about the common malady of one said, but Master, I'm afraid. You'll find this in the 12th chapter of Luke. He said to his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought. Now this is interesting. Try to understand. Take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, neither for the body, what you shall put on. The life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. Now this is a pretty fundamental thing here. In other words, many of us are very selfish about our life. And many of us are concerned more about what we eat. Sometimes what our neighbor has. And many of us don't care much about taking care of the body, but we want to dress it. We don't want to exercise. We don't want to eat the right things. So we cover it up. That's right. And we know we're covering it up. When you can do something about it. Now, if your muscles are all out of shape, do it, you know. Get the feet and do it. You'd be surprised how much better you feel. Get that oxygen to the brain, you'll remember things. So many people will come, they'll say, you know, Doctor, I'm getting old because I can't remember. I can't even remember my phone number. And the only reason is they're not breathing, they're not exercising. This is true. Read any medical book, and any of the doctors here will tell you. When you get stagnated, then you don't even breathe anymore. You don't do this anymore. The circulation, get the oxygen up there. You'll remember your phone number. And then Jesus said something else. I don't know how all that got in, but it did. He said, consider the ravens. For they neither sow nor they reap. And they don't have a storehouse or a barn. And God feeds them. How much more are you better than the fowls? And they said, well, what does all this mean? He said, just seek you the kingdom of God and all the things that you want shall be added unto you. And then he added again, fear not, little flock. For it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Now, he meant the happiness, the joy, and all that you need. And you know, in that same chapter, he concluded this. For where your treasure is, there your heart be all. That's simple. Now, what do you treasure? A person will worry, worry. That must be what they're treasuring. All day long. Sometimes throughout the night. Remember, where your treasure, this is the heart. And let's feel this life within us is a treasure. The ability we have here tonight to love, bless each other, a treasure. And that admonition that we find in the 12th chapter of Luke is as modern as tomorrow. Then as now, people wavered between hope and fear. And they continued to put things first and God second. And you can't do it. This life comes first. If you want to live happily, this body comes too. And if you want this body to be there, then this mind comes. You can't separate them. Body, mind, and spirit. Do it. You won't be afraid. Our Father, we're grateful this evening to know that we're here all speaking and all praying. May we just do a little analyzing. What's the cast out joyfully? 
Now, I'm not talking about casting something out for just an hour or two. I'm talking about saying, this is gone. Let's not do too much even at one time. Let's just take one thing. Because if we can eliminate one worry, one fear tonight, oh, we'll sleep as we've never slept. Let's feel that. And let's give thanks. And so it is. Amen.